Folks, today I've got a meat and potatoes one for you. How to get an entire afternoon of practice out of just one metronome setting. Stay with me. Here's why you should care. When it comes to practice, you've got one set of people telling you more structure. On the other side are the people telling you, just flow, man, let your freak flag fly. Find your creativity, follow your bliss. Well, today's lesson is not a lengthy treatise on deliberate practice. If you need that, you can watch my video here or here. Hang on, sorry, just a sec. What do you mean they can't? Guys, change of plans. I'll put links to those videos in the description below the video player. Right underneath the link to my free three video mini course that you can get if you subscribe to my... <coughs> anyway, today's going to be a strictly how-to video. I won't bore you with why you should be both structured and loose in your practice. I'll just show you one instance of how you might achieve that. I'm going to show you how to get an entire afternoon of practice out of just one metronome setting. Just quarters in 4-4 four, four at 110 BPM. And there are no licks to learn. You can take this method and apply it to your practice today. And if you like the lesson and feel like you want to go deeper, you can click the link below the player and download my free... <coughs> anyway, stay tuned. Exercise one, metronome on quarters. Okay, so most metronome practice usually begins and ends with the advice, play with the metronome. And of course that's super valuable. If you're new to metronome practice, that is the headline. Like the most important thing to know about practicing with a metronome is practice with a metronome. Second rule of Fight Club is you do not talk about Fight Club. In fact, I dare say besides my sticks, my metronome app is my single most indispensable tool I practice with. More even than my drums. Because in a pinch, you can always dojo storm a guitar center. By the way, is it weird that a character in the book The Game just straight stole Tyler Durden's name? Like, pleased to meet you, I'm John McClane. So with the metronome on quarters, you're really just trying to make it disappear. Anyway, because I'm such a stickler for the metronome, because my own time was so bad for so long, people are always asking me like, what? crazy metronome app do you work with? Like, what's the latest shit? And I say I've been using the same free version of an iPhone app since 2009. Anyway, here's the problem with quarters. They allow you to follow somebody else's beat. So if you're only ever playing with a click, you're never challenging yourself to create the tempo, as you would in, say, a studio big band. Not going there, too easy. Anyway, that brings us to our second metronome placement. Metronome placement two, eighth note offbeats. When we switch the pulse to eighth note offbeats, all of a sudden we can no longer follow the metronome. We have to create the pulse on our own and use the metronome to check whether we're rushing or dragging. No. And I wouldn't just practice beats, but also fills and soloing. Here's the crazy thing. People sometimes ask me, what are you doing to get your metronome to click on the offbeats? My metronome doesn't have that crazy setting. So what do I do? Nothing. You don't have to change the beat at all. You just change where you hear it. Instead of one, two, three, four, you can hear it one and two and three and four and. So that's crazy, but we can get crazier. Trust me. Metronome placement three, last 16th. Last 
16th note is even better when you want to get your subdivisions clean. Like, ever wonder why you can play exactly the same lick as David Cola? Or Justin Tyson? And theirs just sounds better? It's largely because their subdivisions are consistent. And there are a few better ways to practice your subdivision than with the metronome on the last 16th. You can do it with straight 16ths. Or with swung 16ths for a Motown Philly type beat. That's also super helpful for practicing jazz. Get out of my head. Okay, but so far all of these placements are stuff you've already seen if you've watched my videos for a hot minute, or if you've already downloaded my free three video mini course, about which way more detail if you click below the But now we get into less charted territory. You're going along, you've played quarters, you've played eighth off beats, you played 16th off beats. And you're like, eh, well maybe I'm done. Weak sauce, bro. Weak sauce. You think David Goggins is done? You think Andy Prado is done? I'm gonna go ahead and pretend I didn't hear that. Anyway, moving on. Metronome placement four. Dotted quarters. By the way, the reason for the boom mic is I'm using the iPhone for the metronome, and both the metronome and the lav mic need to plug into the iPhone, and I don't want to be switching back and forth, so I have like 65 different files. Anyway, dotted quarters on the metronome is a little bit big boy pants territory. You can play in four with the metronome cycling on every three bars like this. But I actually like to play in six, or big three, with the metronome starting on the 16th upbeat of a slow bar of 3-4. I want to make this super easy to understand because a lot of these type of videos just gloss over this stuff like, hey, look at me once they get to the advanced stuff. So I'll play a very simple beat in three over the pulse for a few bars and I'll make sure I count it off super clearly so you can hear it. The next thing you can do is swung 16ths, like a pretty shuffle or 90s hip hop beat only in three. Okay, so why are we doing this? Because one thing I always talk about is the importance of focus in practice. How the guy or girl who practices one kick a thousand times is way more deadly than the one who practices a thousand different kicks. So I'm not trying to give you a million things to do and you're not doing any of them well. But there's a fine line between focus and boredom. So my advice is go as deep as you can with these. If you want to focus on one for a whole day or even weeks and you're still getting stuff out of it and you're not burning out, that's great. But changing up the pulse is just an easy way of tricking yourself into spending two hours practicing timing by hitting it from a number of different angles instead of burning out after 15 minutes because you're doing the same boring thing over and over again. And for this dotted quarter exercise, it can feel like a brain massage, a totally novel place to hear the metronome. Anyway, last placement. Metronome placement five, offset quarter note triplets. So this is another one I don't just want to gloss over and give you kind of the wow factor. Like, soon Padawan, you too will be able to walk on water. Hmm. Not so much. The truth is, I f 
drop this stuff all the time. But I want to show you number five, which again, we just started with 4-4 four, four with 110 beats per minute on the dial. No fancy subdivisions, no drum machines, just a free metronome app. By the way, this sort of thing is what's playing in my headphones if I go full introvert at NAM and just gorilla drum on the kits until either somebody talks to me or I get yelled at to get off the kit. <laughs> By the way, 2021, if there was ever a year we needed the healing power of Nam, the spray tans, the bleach blonde hair, the parking a half hour away, the grilled cheese truck, all I'm saying is if there's a vaccine and they're waiting till after the election to share it, can I say that? Did I just get demonetized? Okay, so offset quarter note triplets. Let me count this off super clearly so you can hear exactly where I'm placing it. Three, four. So you can kind of do a doo-wop beat in a slow three, like I only have eyes for you. Or you can do something busier like a jazz waltz or even a backbeat jazz waltz. This placement is great to practice super slow triplet bass tempos. You can even do the Elvin Jones Equinox thing. By the way, there's a reason jazz musicians call that grown-up tempo. It's because it's basically the hardest thing to play. So there you have it. Five completely novel ways to use the metronome in a single sitting. Anyway, if you've enjoyed this lesson and you happen to catch any of the hint dropping throughout, I do have a mailing list. In fact, I've got a bribe for you to join that list. If you click the link below the player and enter your email address in on the next page, I'll send you three completely free videos, which I assert will make you playing better in the next three weeks than it's gotten in the previous six months. I feel like once you've experienced that quantum leap in your learning, you'll come back to me for all your drum learning needs. Anyway, it's been real. Always enjoy these. We'll see you next week, same time, same place for another lesson of the week. Make some noise. Everyone says make some noise. Make some noise is a uh, weekender for I'm not entertaining enough, so I need to beg you to cheer. <laughs> I lost snare. My snare strainer just broke. Snare drum B. Adapting to shit on the fly. This is the new name.